Last year for Labor Day weekend, I was at Holiday World. This year for Labor Day weekend, I am at Indiana Beach. This is my second time ever at this park. My first time coming in 2020. And since then they have added a few new coaches here, one of which I will be able to ride. Now, as you can see, American Trial Looping just sitting there behind Steel Hog. Not running yet, but they have Cyclone, which I think was over there somewhere. I didn't see it though, but it's over there somewhere behind a uh, Hoosier Hurricane one now. But I hope to get on Cyclone today because that'll be the only new credit I get because I don't, I have no clue if Dry Loop is actually. I know for a fact it's not opening because there's apparently no train on site. And I'm gonna make Steel Hog my first ride of the day. And this was my favorite ride in the park last time I was here. So I wonder if it'll still be able to hold up to a lot of stuff I've written recently. And I know you're thinking like Lost Coast would do that first. I'm probably gonna head over there after I ride Steel Hog. And I wanna make this one a Zen ride because I would have had one in 2020, but my ticket to get into the park didn't work. So it wasn't the first one here, but that's for another video, I guess for maybe, I don't know. But for right now, we got about, I don't know, 20 minutes or so till the park opens. And then whenever it opens, I'll try to get first ride of the day on Steel Hog. Would you look at that? They have two cars running on this ride. Last time I was here, they had one car running. And I think every coaster here with the exception of Tiger Coaster or Tiger Coaster, I don't know how you pronounce it, but I'm gonna call it Tiger Coaster, I guess for right now, but Tiger Coaster had two cars running. Everything else had one train. So it's nice that Steel Hog has two trains running for right now. They're starting up Steel Hog right now. That siren just heard was their startup siren. So I wouldn't be surprised if we get some text testing action fairly soon. Steel Hog just opened and I was the first ride of the day on it. And I made it a Zen ride. So that is another Zen ride added to the books. Now I'm gonna go over and try and find out where Lost Coaster of Superstition Mountain is. Cause I know that line gets really long and I don't think they've opened it just yet. So I'm gonna go head over there since I've already gotten Steel Hog done. But I will come back to ride Steel Hog again cause that was a ton of fun. And the hang time on the dive loop, I forgot how good that element was. Like I overlooked it last time I rode it. That might've been the best element of the ride. Either that or it was the downwards inline twist, whatever that thing is called. But I don't know, both are killer inversions and that was overall a very fun ride. I 
but I told you not, so I found the bag. <laughs> Getting closer to the station for Lost Coaster, and it's probably good that I'm doing this thing early because the line for it is starting to build up. And on my last ride on this back in 2020, I was not a fan of the ride. Like, it was so uncomfortable, like jerky, and there was one pothole that was so rough. Like, oh my gosh, it was bad. And I had it in my bottom 10 coaster overall, and I still do have it there to this day, as a matter of fact. I really want to like this ride more because it's so unique. But the ride experience wasn't that good for me. Actually, it wasn't good that good. It was not good, period. So I really hope this thing isn't as bad. Although, I don't know how rough it's gotten over the past two years. But I'll have to wait and find out once I get on. Next to get on, it looks like I was wanting to sit in the front car so I can get a more mild experience because I don't want it to be too, too rough. I know that's weird, but whatever. But I might be sitting in the back car, unfortunately. So I got a bad feeling about this. Wish me luck. I just got to change the opinion on Lost Coaster on Superstition Mountain. I decided to ride back car backwards, mainly because the front car was taken, and I feel like, why the heck now go for it? And it was not as bad as I thought it would be. Like, now, get, don't, get, don't get me wrong, it was still uncomfortable in some parts. Like, my shin hit one of the things in the middle there on one of the transitions, so that wasn't pleasant. But other than that, it was still decent, and it was going so slow. Like, I legitimately thought I was about to valley, so. That was a wild ride. I would still take Cornball, Steel Hog, and Tiger Coaster over it, but I'm willing to put Lost Coaster ahead of Hoosier Hurricane. So Lost Coaster is now my number four in the park. And so it's nowhere near the bottom 10 for me overall. It was actually a decent ride. Currently in line for Cornball Express now. Gonna take a ride on, on this thing, see how that holds up. I remember this ride being really good last time, so let's take a ride on this. And I do want to try riding this thing in the back of the train, because I did not ride that in 2020. I did, I think I only did front row in 2020. But I think you front row first, and then go over the ride second to back row in a little bit. It's not very back. But first, let's do front row.
Cornball Express. That was amazing. Like, I underrated this ride in the past. I forgot how good the airtime was in that ride. And to be honest, that might actually be better than Steelhawk, my favorite coaster here. Like, that was good. And I'm going to go check out Hoosier Hurricane because I saw him do a test run of that while I was waiting to get dispatched on Cornball. So I want to ride this thing again. I really hope the front row is available because last time I rode it, the very front was not available. I was stuck in the second row. So that was not pleasant. And I bet if I, if I get a front row ride, it would be better. So let's go ride Hoosier Hurricane and hopefully get the front seat on. And if the front is still not to get my own chance, I might go for second to back. So let's give this one a shot and see how it holds up. I found the biggest surprise of the trip for me, Hoosier Hurricane. That was unbelievably smooth because I was up front rather than the second row. And there were some good airtime moments on that ride. Like, I don't know why that ride was so rough. I mean, I, I was on a wheel scene in 2020, which may have explained why, but I am definitely coming back to this one. And since the park is open until 10 tonight, I am 100% doing a night ride on Hoosier Hurricane. I bet going over the water now would be such a cool experience. So, not terrible. My mom and brother said I should ride these swings and turn you across from each other, so I wonder what that's all about. I want to see just how chaotic it actually is. Just rode the water swings, and I think these swings are severely overhyped. I was on the expectations that you'd be crashing into someone the entire time. That was not the case for me. Like I didn't really get bumped into. I don't think at all. It's one part I noticed. I really, really am disappointed with this ride. I mean, I know I'm sounding so negative, but that was my experience I had with it. I didn't, I didn't really like it. So that's one and done for me. Now I think I'm gonna go over and ride either Tiger Coaster or Den of Lost Thieves because Den of Lost Thieves is a uh, they're shooting dark right here and see how I do on it because I thought I remember myself doing decently well on it last time so let's go hop on that and see how I do after a while but 
I'm not sure which I'll do first, whether it's Tiger Coaster or Den of Lost Seas. I mean, probably Den of Lost Seas since I'm passing by it on the way towards Tiger Coaster, I think. But let's figure out what's closer on the way over there. Den of Lost Thieves, so looks like this will be next on the list of rides I'll be doing for today. And then I'll be making my way over towards Tiger Coaster. I just saw a cyclone ride over there, and I don't have that coach, so I'm gonna go ride that after I ride Den of Lost Thieves. That is a tough shooting dark ride right there, for some extent. I mean, a lot of the targets weren't working for some reason. Like, they were just flat out turned off. But I noticed that it was very easy to shoot at the target from a far distance. So, that was nice, but I bet it would have been a lot better if some of the targets actually worked. And some of them were not working well. And now I gotta figure out how to get to Cyclone, because the same entrance is blocked off, which. I'll figure something out, but there's got to be some way to get up here. Just got off of Cyclone for my first time. That's not a bad little ride. There were some good laterals in some of the heels, and one of these airtime hills launched me out of my seat. I was not expecting it. It was, a little, it was really nice. But at the end of the second hill right here where this next car is going down, there's a harsh, and I mean very harsh, trim break. Like, it almost stopped the ride entirely. And it was wild. It, there you go. Oh, yep, right there. I think that's the one that really gets you. So, yeah, that was one right before that got me. But it was still a really solid ride. I'm, actually, my friends are getting down a little bit, but for now, I'll take some shots of it and then go ride Tiger Coast because I haven't done that one yet. to a tiger coaster now and I'm gonna ride this once and then go on video mode because I don't have my footage of the coaster shirt from today.
I got off of Tiger Coaster a little bit ago, and if there's one word I could use to describe this ride, it is just fun. It is just a fun ride. Like, it's not the most intense ride out there, but man, it's just good fun. Like, I had a smile on my face the whole time on this ride, and that first turn after the first drop, I forgot how good the laterals were. Like, I was clean to the side of the train. It was nice. Don't know if I prefer this to Cyclone. I mean, I might, though. It's close. Cyclone and Tigger Coaster, I, I don't know how you say it, but those two are very similar and somehow enjoyable though, but I think I might get Tigger Coaster with a slight edge just because of how much fun it is. Like, I thought it was more fun ride than Cyclone was. gonna do now is do Cornball Express in the back of the train because it looks like it's a station way although it's starting to rain so I gotta hurry and get up there and take the closer for weather.
just got off of second to back seat on Cornball Express. And while well, I think some of the hills I think were a little bit better in the back, I thought the air time was a little bit stronger up front. And so therefore, I think I have a slight preference for the front row on this ride. Although maybe if I rode the second to back again, I maybe change my mind. But as of now, I think I slightly prefer the front seat of this ride. Now I'm gonna go over and ride Steel Hog again and get some more footage of it. I haven't really been over in that area of the park very much. So let's go over towards Steel Hog.
got completely sidetracked because I found this cool pathway that took me right underneath Tiger Coaster and Cornball Express, so I was getting some good shots from over there. And now I'm gonna go outside of the park and geez, who's hurting? Geez, it's so loud. Anyway, I'm gonna go outside of the park and film Steel Hog and actually probably ride it one more time since I'm gonna be passing by on the way over there. And then I do wanna go take a look at American Dry Looping or whatever the heck that triple looping is called, which I think is American Dry Looping at this point, but I don't know if that is in college or something like that. So let's go over, ride Steel Hog one more time and then go outside the park and film Steel Hog and take a look at American Dry Looping. From this angle, it almost looks kind of hard to tell which ride is which because it almost makes Steel Hog look like one giant roller coaster because Steel Hog is like right there in front and then you got dry looping in the back. So that's definitely a disorienting view and something I'm definitely not used to.
She said she was going to take a video. I don't know what I was thinking when I said it's close between Cornball and Steelhog for the best ride in the park because it's really not. I forgot how fun Steelhog is just now. Like, it's definitely my favorite ride here in this park. It's got so many good elements, but not a single element is a dumb this ride, in my opinion. It does what it sets out to do very well. And now I'm gonna go outside of the park and get some shots of Steelhog from this area near the back side of the ride. So let's go for it.
was fairly limited on the footage that it's almost steel hog from over there. The problem is that whole pathway over there, there was just a pathway that was right next to steel hog. That was blocked off after they built Triple Loop or whatever the heck it's called. Someone came up and asked what I was doing. I said I was trying to find some spots of steel hog and they said that area was removed because of uh, Triple Loop. So I don't know if that's what it's actually been called, but then again, I, I have no idea. So it's unfortunate I don't have any vantage points of it from over there, but I'm going to head back into the park now and probably take a ride on Hoosier Hurricane again because I was so impressed with it earlier. So let's do that and then probably catch a ride on the Sky Ride as well because I need to do that. I just got off of Hoosier Hurricane in the slight rain because it's starting to rain a little bit. That is one of the most fun rides I've had on any coaster for the year. Like that was so much fun. Like, I was laughing my head off the entire time because I don't know why. It's got such a fun ride for me. It's like I don't know why people say it's unbearably rough. But I mean the second row it is, but in the very front, which is why I rode it both times, it's not bad at all. So I definitely enjoyed this ride and I really hope it doesn't close for weather because I would love to get a night ride on this thing at some point. And speaking of Hoosier Hurricane, I'm making my way over towards the bridge that Hoosier Hurricane dies on to get some good shots of it. So we're going to start heading over that way in just a minute.
This view is gorgeous. Definitely one of my favorite photo ops of any park. And some kind of funny happened. Um, someone came up to me. They were apparently riding Hoosier Hurricane in the back row. They said their hat fell off. I don't know if you guys were watching it or not, but I wasn't paying attention to the details about that when I was filming it. But someone said that they apparently lost their hat. And there was a hat sitting right around there somewhere in the water. So some people on jet skis came over and got the hat and they threw it back up to them. They were on that side to throw it up. They miss. They come out of the bridge, throw it up, and then someone gets it. And there's another train coming, so I've got to get in a position so I can talk. I was going to ride the park's Ferris wheel, which is right over here. It's kind of RC. I don't know if you guys can see it or not, but it was right there but they're taking forever to load it. So I'm gonna do a lap on the sky ride because I haven't ridden that and that's one of the best attractions here in my opinion to take in the entire park. So we're gonna hop on the sky ride and see if we can get any cool pieces of the rides running while we're up here. Back in line, take the other half back to what I got on originally.
that second half of the sky ride was excellent. The first half I didn't get too, too much, but I feel like I got a lot in the second half. I mean, I got really lucky with uh, Hoosier Hurricane and even Lost Coaster because Lost Coaster is a hard one to get photos of, but I managed to get quite a few, so not terrible. I do want to hop on that train at some point if I can find out where the heck you, you get on at, but I don't know. I got a feeling it's about to start pouring, so that's not good if it's close to wet rides now. I hope it's not because we got a couple hours left and then it'll be time for night rides fairly soon and I would hate for the rest of the clothes during that end. This cyclone is down for the day because I've hardly seen it running. Good thing I wrote it when I did, but I guess Tiger Coaster exists and that's I'd probably take that over cyclone to be honest with you. There was a storm that came through and closed the rides down, so life is probably a lot shorter now. So in the meantime, I'm going to go over and ride Cornball, it's the Cornball Express, and then go ride Tiger Coaster, because I want to ride Cornball up front again, and I do want to ride Tiger Coaster again, so let's go ride those two, and then probably hop on Who's Your Hurricane again, then I don't know, you know for a fact that we're going to ride on that, because that was a killer night, so let's go take a ride on Cornball. I wonder how good the airtime on Cornball Express will be because it's been warm up over there and I last rode it. I think in like the middle of the afternoon, so I expect the airtime to be really good now that it's really warmed up. I'll find out once I get on and get a few more points because I'm trying to Cornball Express at night is unnaturally fast. Like, it felt like it was running so much faster than it was earlier in the day, and that was amazing. And now I'm gonna get a night ride on Tigger Coaster, and then get a night ride on Hoosier Hurricane, because that is my most anticipated night ride here, because I've been going over the water at night, and like, oh, that looks like a pitch black night ride for the most part, so that looks like it'll be fun. For now, let's give Tigger Coaster a shot. They're rolling trends on this one big time. There's another one going up the left hill, and another one that hasn't even hit the brakes yet. The obstacle rider absolutely killing it today. I think someone's house is right over there behind Tigger Coach because I heard someone shooting off fireworks and I know it wasn't this part but there'd be a whole show going on so that scared me quite a few times not gonna lie.
Once again, Tigger Coasters. That thing amazed me even more than I did earlier. Like, much like Carnival Express, Tigger Coasters is also a good night ride. Like, I get that it was kind of lit up and everything, but I didn't care. It was still awesome as ever. And in the off chance that they closed Hoosier Hurricanes line early, I'm gonna go do a night ride on that now. So I've done it, because that's the main night ride I wanna do here, is Hoosier Hurricane. And then I'm gonna go over, ride Steel Hog at night, and then probably come back to Hoosier Hurricane the rest of that. Honestly, it's, it's weird that this thing is so much fun. Like, it might be top three in the park. I don't know. It's either that or Ticker Coaster. I don't know. It's really good fun. So let's go do an ad right on Hoosier Hurricane and then make it over to Steel Hog if time allows for that. Park is now closed for the day and I finished off with a Hoosier Hurricane Night Ride. That is most likely my three my favorite out of the three night rides I got here, which I did Hoosier Hurricane at night, Cornball Express at night, and then Tater Coaster at night. I wanted to get on Steel Hog at night, but I think they were only running one car on it, so the line was really long. This meant I wasn't able to really get on it. So I'm gonna have to review my ride count and see what I got on today and then I'll share that because I don't remember what I rode today, so I'll just take a look and find out. The final ride count for my day here at Indiana Beach was three on Cornball and Hoosier Hurricane, two on Steel Hog and Ticker Coaster, and one on Cyclone, Den of Lost Thieves, Lost Coaster, the Sky Ride, and then the Water Swings. Kind of shocking i only did denim lost these once because that's a shooting dark ride and usually i ride that the most but that wasn't exactly the case today and some other highlights for today uh who's your hurricane biggest surprise of the trip by far and i have not yet made my most underrated coaches video but i will make that video like sometime during the off season most likely who's your hurricane's gonna be high on the list if not the number one i mean i don't know but that was a very surprising ride and then getting on cyclone and how good that was and Really, every ride that I got on a coaster was good today. I mean, Lost Coaster is still my least favorite coaster in the park, but that's because I got a bunch of good rides on the other coasters. And I also got that Zen ride on Steel Hog, which was nice. And it was nice to get back on these rides again. And one of my Instagram followers with the nickname of Carter Coaster said that this is the best park in Indiana. It's not. I still much prefer Holiday World to this park, but I kind of see why he has Indiana Beach higher than it. Like, this is a good park for sure. And plus it was nice to get on some awesome night rides here, especially Hoosier Hurricanes that dives over the water and everything, because that was a good, good night ride. Too bad that the moon was behind the clouds, as you can kind of see over there. The moon was right there behind the clouds during our ride, and then it came out right after, go figure. But it was still very, very solid, and that's a wrap for this vlog. And before you click on this video, please make sure to leave a like if you haven't done so already. Be sure to subscribe for more content like this. And turn the bell on to get notified every time I upload. I post content like this fairly frequently. And if you don't want to miss out on anything, stay tuned for more. And the next vlog will most likely be from Six Flags St. Louis. So stay tuned for that. And until then, we'll see you guys later.